What's going on guys, it's Frager here again and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you guys how I use Replay Mod to get these nice cinematic videos. So a few things before we get into this tutorial. I am not going to be showing you guys how to install Replay Mod. If you guys want to know how to install Replay Mod, I will try my best to leave a link in the description below for a tutorial on how to install Replay Mod. And lastly, if you do end up enjoying this tutorial, do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below. And if you have any suggestions on what videos you guys want to see me do in the future, or if you have any questions on this tutorial, do not forget to leave a a comment down below but anyway I'm going to let you guys enjoy the rest of the tutorial all right guys so when you want to make a cool cinematic video in Minecraft the first thing you want to do is you want to decide what you want in your video so I'm gonna let you guys decide what you want to build in your video but for me personally I'm going to be building up some houses in my Frager builds world now don't worry this is not spoilers the video that I'm doing this recording for at the time of you watching this has already been posted but at the time of me recording this I have not even started editing it yet so you guys are going to kind of see a behind the scenes look of how I edit my videos. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our world so I'll see you guys once I'm in there. Alright so we are here in our Frager builds world and it is starting to turn nighttime. so I'll try to make this as quick as possible. So the first thing you want to do once you are in your world is you want to pick out a spot where you are going to build which I have already done. Alright so once you have your materials ready and you are ready to record all you have to do is go into your pod menu and click start recording and then this message will pop up in your chat saying recording started and you just go off and build whatever you want but I'm not gonna build that for you guys on camera right here because that would be kind of boring so I'll see you guys once the recording is finished and it's time to edit all right so we are in the area where we just finished recording these houses being built up and now it's time to finish the recording. So all you have to do to finish the recording is go back into your pause menu and click stop recording. You could also click pause recording and that'll pause your recording and you can resume it at a later time if you just wanna take a break or you need to gather some more resources or whatever. But we wanna stop the recording so we're just gonna click stop recording. All right, so now that we have it stopped, it's time to go back to the main menu and once we go back to the main menu we get this message saying saving replay file and sometimes it'll go faster than other times but once that message goes away then the replay file is ready for editing okay so now it's time to edit the replay footage so what you need to do to access your replay footage is go to replay viewer right here click on that and then you have all of these replay recordings and the one that we need is this one at the very top it's the one that we just recorded. Okay, so now we are here in our replay recording and we can just pause that there. And to show your mouse in the replay recording, you just hit T and that brings up like the text chat or whatever, but it doesn't show up in the replay recording. So you just hit T and your mouse will show up. And if you want to move your camera around, you can just move side to side and forward and backwards with this, but you can't actually move the camera around until your mouse goes away. So you just hit escape and then your mouse goes away and you can move your camera around like this. The first thing that I'm going to show you guys are the two different timelines that we have up here. So we have the recording timeline at the very top, and this is the timeline of your recording, and you can skip ahead to any point on the timeline and see the progression of your building or your recording or whatever you have and then down here we have the what I call the keyframe timeline this is the timeline where you put your keyframes on and you can set a position keyframe and a time keyframe and we'll get into those a little bit later on in the tutorial so the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out where you recorded your building and for us we recorded it right here and so once you figured out where you started building you then need to figure out which way you want your camera path to go 
and I think I'm going to have it come along this way and kind of go up a little bit as it goes along. So once you've figured that out, the next thing you need to do is figure out where you want the first keyframe to line up. And I think I'm going to put it right about here. I think is going to be a good spot. Now you want to make sure that this line here is pretty far towards the beginning, which is where we want our time lapse to start. And once we have it towards the beginning, we are just going to set both of our keyframes at the beginning, the very start of this keyframe timeline right here. Now this one is your position keyframe and this one is your time keyframe. Now your time keyframe is set wherever this line is on the timeline. So we have it set right now at about seven or eight seconds on the timeline, somewhere around there. And then your position keyframe is set to wherever your camera is looking at the time that you set it. So the next thing I like to do is skip ahead in our keyframe timeline to the 10 second marker because I like to set keyframes every 10 seconds. You can set them however many intervals you want. You can do every five seconds or every 20 seconds or every 30 seconds, but I personally like to do it every 10 seconds. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to edit this time lapse on fives. So that means we are going to skip ahead to five minutes on our recording timeline. And I usually like to do a little bit past five minutes. So we're going to do five minutes and six seconds. And then we are going to move our camera to where we want our next keyframe to be set. And I'm going to move it to right about there looks good. And we're going to again press T to bring up our mouse and we are going to set both of our keyframes again. Now really all you need in this one is the position keyframe. The time keyframe you can set at the end of your keyframe timeline. So you technically don't need the time keyframe on this interval but I do like to put it there anyways just so that I can get a better idea of how the time lapse is progressing. So again I said that we are editing this time lapse on five. And so what that means when I say that is that we're just condensing five minutes of replay recording down into 10 seconds worth of time-lapse footage. Now you can edit your time-lapse on threes and that means you have three minutes down into 10 seconds or you can edit it on tens which means you have 10 minutes down into 10 seconds or 15s or 20s or whatever you want to do. That part is up to you what interval you want in your time-lapse but my standard right now is five minutes. Sometimes I'll go on tens if it is a longer recording and sometimes I'll go on threes if it's a shorter recording but my standard is fives. So what we're going to do next is on our keyframe timeline here we are going to skip ahead to the 20 second marker and we're going to skip ahead on our recording timeline to about 10 minutes. So again we're moving our camera around to where we want our next keyframe to be set and we're going to set it right about there is probably good and then we're just going to continue doing that until we run out of replay recording. So I'll let you guys finish up your keyframe timeline and once we're done with that I'll show you guys how to render your camera path. Alright guys, so I have my camera path completely set and ready to go. And the reason why this set of keyframes is not on the 120 marker is because I only have 39 minutes of recording. So that is just one minute short of what would be our next interval, which would be 40 minutes. So I just shortened this keyframe interval up here by about two seconds. And if it goes just above your next interval, then you can bring this set of keyframes a little bit further along when you set them. Um, but that's usually how I do it when the recording doesn't quite line up with our intervals. So if you want to preview your camera path here before you render it, you can just bring this marker to the beginning and this is your camera path play button right here so you just click play and it takes a little while to load but once it loads you can watch your camera path go along here and you can preview it and see if you need to make any changes to it or if it looks fine as it is and for me right now the camera path looks perfectly fine so I don't really have to go through the entire camera path to kind of figure that out so now that we are ready to render our camera path we just need to come up here to this button right here and when we click this button it'll come up with this menu and from this menu we can alter the resolution that it renders at and we can also alter the frame rate that it renders at and what kind of rendering and encoding it does and what the bitrate is and what the output file is and all that good stuff 
but right now I have it set to render out a 720p by 1280 render, but that is the standard resolution that I use for rendering TikTok videos but we are not rendering a TikTok video, we are rendering a YouTube video. So we need to change that resolution to be 1920 by 1080. And then we need to change this frame rate to be 60 FPS, just like that. So that is the standard rendering that I use for my YouTube videos. I render at 1080p, 60 FPS. So once you have all of the settings set to what you want, you just come down here and click render. But the first time you click this button, it'll come up with a message telling you to download and install the FFmpeg encoder on your computer. If you do not have that already installed, you need to go do that right now in order to render your camera path. If you want a tutorial on how to install that, I will try my best to leave a link to a video in the description below on how to install that. But just know the first time you click this render button, that message will pop up. And that doesn't mean that your instance of replay mod is broken, that just means you need to install the FFmpeg encoder in order Order to render your replay videos but I already have that installed and if you have that installed then just click the render button and it takes a little while for it to load the render preview but once it's loaded up you can preview the render by clicking this checkbox right here and you can see it rendering the video and I'll see you guys once this video is done rendering which is gonna take about another four minutes All right guys, so our rendering just finished and when it's done, it comes up with this little menu and you can either upload it to YouTube, which I don't do, or you can open the video folder that the rendering was saved in. This is the one that I do because I like to compile my videos together before I upload them on YouTube. And once I open up the video folder, I just click close and then I exit the replay and then I go off and edit my videos. So that's gonna do it for this tutorial. And of course, if you did end up enjoying it, do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below. And if you have any questions on this tutorial or if you have any other suggestions on videos you wanna see me do in the future, then don't forget to leave a comment down below. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.